Sometimes people don't share their faith because they feel like they haven't arrived at perfection yet. You don't have to be perfect to share your faith. No one's perfect anyway. Just open up your mouth and tell people about Jesus and they'll get saved. And God will use you in the process. I have learned this, that even as we're growing, God will still anoint us and use us to help other people. And then what happens is the breakthrough that God has given to you now becomes a breakthrough for somebody else. And this is the best part of all. That the very things forged in hell against you to take you out, to take you out prematurely, to somehow stop the anointing on your life, to stop the destiny of God on your life, to stop the purpose of God in your life. Somehow you have grown over those things to the point now where you are able to give away what God has given you. Peter said it this way, what I have, I give to you. Rise up and walk. If you're laying there crippled in depression, you're not going to walk up to someone and say, rise up and walk. But if step by step, little by little, you have grown, you have strengthened, you have increased. Now one day you have something that you can give someone. What would the world look like if Christians grew to the point where we weren't leeches, but we were life givers? Come on now, you don't have to be a leech. You know what a leech is? A leech sucks the life out of you. That's what a leech does. You don't have to be a leech. You can be a life giver. You don't have to be a swamp. You can be a fountain. Come on now. God doesn't want you to be a swamp. Where people just come near you and all of a sudden they just sink down in depression. No, you don't have to be a swamp. You can be a fountain of living water. Where you give life. What would church be like if we all came ready to give? Ready to help someone. Ready to encourage someone. Ready to pray for someone. What would church be like? If we all gathered together, filled up with the life of God, ready to give it to somebody else. What would church look like if when we left this place, we were filled up, ready to give it to somebody else? God does not want you to hide your breakthrough away. He wants you to give your breakthrough away to somebody else. And that's when you make the devil really regret ever trying to mess with you. You want to make the devil regret trying to take you out? You go and help somebody else. You go and pray for somebody else. You go and give to somebody else what God has given to you. Even if you're still struggling, give to someone else what God has given to you. And it will increase you. Oh, hallelujah. Sometimes people don't share their faith because they feel like they haven't arrived at perfection yet. You don't have to be perfect to share your faith. No one's perfect anyway. Just open up your mouth and tell people about Jesus and they'll get saved. And God will use you in the process. I have learned this, that even as we're growing, God will still anoint us and use us to help other people. Sometimes it's not your perfection that inspires someone. Sometimes it's not your strength that inspires someone. Sometimes it's the weakness and the struggle you have persevered through that becomes the greatest inspiration for someone else that's going through it. That's why every single thing you walk through, God will anoint it. God will anoint your pain. Come on now, don't despise your pain. Let God anoint it to help someone else. And the comfort you receive from God, you can give it away to someone else. Oh, hallelujah. I think this place is full of vic... vic I think this place is full of victors tonight. This place is full of fruitful trees tonight who are going over the wall, who are going higher, who are outgrowing every single thing the enemy has ever tried to build around your life. And you're not going to sit there staring at that wall anymore. Come on now, I commission you tonight. You are not going to sit there staring at that wall anymore. You're not going to sit there and you're not going to stare at the lack. You're not going to stare at the limit. You're not going to stare at those things. You're going to refocus. You're going to lift up your eyes to where your help comes from. And always remember this. The direction you look is the direction you go. If you want to go down, look down. You want to go up, look up. 
You want to go forward, look forward. You want to go back, look back. Wherever you look is the direction your life goes in. Some people are so fixed on looking back. On the wrongs that have been done to them. On the hurt that's been done to them. They get so stuck looking back that they can never move forward. They get stuck right in that place. Years can go by and they're still living there. They're stuck. They can't forgive. They can't let go. They're just stuck in the pain. Or you could give that pain to God. And you could let him anoint it. And you could get your eyes off of the past and onto the future. You could get your eyes, move your eyes from looking down to, look, to looking upward. And you can begin to go higher. You begin to soar. You begin to fly. You begin to shock everyone around you with who you become. Oh, hallelujah. You are anointed. And I know you're anointed to be a walking breakthrough. Breakthrough is not just something God does in you. It's what he does through you. We got to get our, we got to get our concept even of revival change. Revival is not just what God does in you. It's what he does through you. Everything he does in you, it's for the purpose of releasing it through you. Everything. Every single thing. I got to read this. I got, I got to, I got to make this, this one more point here tonight. Because I, I just believe that breakthrough, I mean radical breakthrough, is about to happen in people's hearts and lives tonight. I believe healing is going to take place on the inside tonight. There's going to be a special touch of the anointing that is going to heal some people on the inside tonight. Stuff that has been trying to get you stuck, things that have been trying to hold you down, God is going to come in and he's going to heal it tonight. And you're going to be free. And what crippled you is going to cause you to fly. The very things that crippled you, God's going to anoint it to make you fly. Isaiah 58, the church has been in a time of fasting, praying, consecrating, giving to God. Our hearts, our lives, our families, the church for this year. Isaiah 58, I just, I just need to share this tonight. This understanding of fasting, because fasting is directly connected to breakthrough. Isaiah 58, verse 6, God is talking about fasting. And I know, I know many times when we think about fasting, we just think of not eating, and then you add prayer to that. So we don't eat or we sacrifice something and then we pray. But there's something a little bit more to fasting here. Isaiah 58, verse 6, it said, Rather, is not this the fast that I've chosen? To loose the bonds of wickedness. To undo the bands of the yoke. You see, God doesn't want to just undo the bands. He wants you to grow so the bands don't fit back on you. To let the oppressed go free and that you break every enslaving yoke. You see, this is where breakthrough then starts to be released through you. Where then God anoints you to break enslaving yokes on other people. It said, is it not? Now here is the next level of fasting. Is it not to divide your bread with the hungry and bring the homeless poor into your house? When you see the naked that you cover him and that you hide not yourself from the needs of your own flesh and blood. Wait a second, God. I thought fasting was just me denying myself. But this is saying, not only do you want me to deny myself, but it's saying the very food that I would have eaten, divide it with the hungry. House the poor. Cover the naked. Don't hide yourself from the needs of your own flesh and blood. In other words, what God was saying is don't just deny yourself food, but open up your eyes to see the people around you that need your help. Because it doesn't do any good if we deny ourselves, but then ignore everyone around us. And the heart of God in this was don't just deny yourself food, but then feed someone, help someone, give to someone. Verse 8, then. Everyone say then. Because that's a transition word. It's a cause and effect word. If you do this, then this will happen. If then. Then shall your light break forth 
like the morning and your healing will spring forth speedily. Your light will break forth like the morning. Your healing will accelerate. Wait a second. What does that mean? It means this. That every time you step out to help someone else get a breakthrough, God's going to cause your breakthrough to accelerate. Verse 10, if you pour out that which sustains your own life for the hungry and satisfy the need of the afflicted, then your light will rise in darkness and your gloom will become like the noonday. God is saying if you want your gloom to become like the noonday, what sustains you, pour it out for somebody else. The anointing that sustains you, pour it out for someone else. The food that sustains you, give it and help someone else. Then your healing will accelerate. Then your darkness will become like the noonday. Oh, come on now. Someone's going to get a breakthrough here tonight. Someone is going to get a radical, radical breakthrough here tonight. Now we're talking about those moments where God comes in and the walls come flat down. Where something accelerates. Something moves into motion. I remember, and I want to make a transition here because this is really strong in my heart tonight. My brother, you can just start to play on the keyboard. If we have a brother on the keys. There's something really strong in my heart tonight. I'm going to make a transition here because I know the times that I've seen breakthrough happen when people begin to step out and give to help somebody else. I've seen supernatural breakthrough happen. I was in a meeting once and there was a woman there and I started to share. And I'm going to share in just a minute something very powerful about some of the sex trafficked children that we have seen rescued recently. This woman was in the meeting and God spoke to her or God touched her heart and she said, God, I want to help rescue one of these children that have been sex trafficked. And she made this decision in the service during worship time that she was going to do this. And as she was worshiping God before that meeting ended, you see what I didn't know, but she told me afterwards, she had experienced trauma as a little girl with sexual abuse. She lived her whole life with it and just lived with it. It became a part of who she was. And her heart was moved with compassion for one of these children because of what she had been through in her life. And she said, God, I want to spare another child from this if I can. When she stepped out to help one of these children, I'm going to tell you what happened. And she came up to me at the end of the meeting with tears running down her face. She said, I made a decision. I was going to help one of these children. And as I was worshiping God, the anointing touched my soul. And God delivered me from my childhood sexual abuse. I'm healed. I'm whole on the inside. God set her free. God set her free. Her breakthrough accelerated when she made the decision to step out and help someone else get a breakthrough. 